model of steam engines and boilers, part 47. This one shows making the steam fittings for the glands and the steam inlet and outlet. This series called How to Build a Model Steam Engine is for my Patreon supporters only. The full length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. Why is it a good idea to join Patreon? Firstly, you get to see the videos a few months before everyone else. You can download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. In the casting set, you get this, a very strange shaped piece of brass. And from the single piece of brass, I'm going to machine two gland nuts and two steam fittings. I've removed the end cylinder cover. You can clearly see the gland fitting that's cast into the cylinder cover and also the one that's cast into the steam chest. Both the exhaust fitting on the cylinder itself and the steam inlet fitting that is supposed to fit on top of the steam chest cover are machined using the same piece of cast brass. For this job, I'm going to use the four jaw chuck and the first thing to do is to fit the piece of brass into the chuck and centralize it. I've tried to align the brass casting in the four jaw chuck completely by eye and get it right first time, but no, it's not going to work out like that. Have a close look at this next clip. When I finish the light facing, you can see clearly that it's not centralized properly. The pip in the middle and all the lines show you exactly how far out it is. So with a little bit of adjustment on the chuck jaws and another facing cut, it now looks like this. I used the centre drill first and then I followed it with a twist drill that is one imperial size under 3 16 of an inch because the first part to make is the piston rod gland. After drilling the hole I then realised that I needed to pull the casting a bit further out from the jaws of the chuck. The next part of the job is to ream this hole to an accurate 3 16 of an inch in diameter. I slowed down the lathe and used the 3 16 reamer. Now it's time to turn part of this down until it's the same diameter as the hole in the cylinder cover. It's a good idea to use a micrometer on this, obviously, but you don't have to. You can use the hole in the cylinder cover as a gauge. When it fits perfectly, it's okay. The drawing shows that this part has to be a quarter of an inch long. So I do just that. Here I'm just facing across the front to clean it up which is a totally pointless exercise because the inside part of the gland cover, once again as shown on the drawing, needs to be slightly countersunk. Quite like this in fact. It's very easy to miss out the countersinking, but it's shown on the drawing for a good reason. It helps to hold the graphited yarn against the piston rod. Here I'm parting off the piston rod gland cover, but I'm parting it off a bit bigger than I need it because what I will eventually do is put all four of these pieces in the three jaw chuck the other way around and face across the front so they're all the same thickness. But I'm going to get all of the four jaw chuck work out of the way first. If you watch the video to the end you will see me do that. Once I've parted off the gland cover I drilled the existing hole out to 7 seconds of an inch in diameter which is tapping size for quarter by 32 threads per inch. Once I'd finished threading the part, I turned the outer diameter to 3 eighths of an inch. I could have kept it flat, you don't really need a shoulder on it like this, it's mainly decorative. But the flange would have looked very bad if it was just a big thick flange. By doing it this way, once again as per the drawing, it does give the model a bit more style. Here once again, I'm parting the component off. I'm now making the steam chest gland cover. First of all, I turn the part to the correct diameter to fit in the steam chest. Then, as always, I centre drill the part, followed by drilling it one imperial size less than one eighth of an inch. After drilling the hole, I introduce the reamer with the lathe running in back gear, because you always need to ream things quite slowly. I'd like to illustrate a point here. You're not supposed to move the reamer backwards. 
I was told this by a viewer who took the time to write in and tell me this. But I am moving the reamer backwards periodically to clear the chips. I have a choice. If I carry on, the reamer will snap off. I frequently have to withdraw the reamer just to clear these chips. You can hear by the sound of it when the chips are starting to jam up. And if this was phosphor bronze, the reamer would have snapped off by now. The final job is the small countersink in the end before parting it off. I've noticed this sort of thing on large steam engines, but not so much on smaller engines. In this clip I'm taking a really fine finishing cut to make sure that this is exactly the right diameter to fit into the hole in the steam chest. Here I'm using the micrometer just to check that the diameter is OK. I've loosely assembled the connecting rod onto the piston rod and everything goes in and out of the cylinder very well. Here are the parts awaiting being trued up in the three-jaw chuck. The flange thickness of the fitting at the top of this picture is about the right thickness. The three-jaw chuck is now refitted to the lathe and I'm machining the thinnest flange first. The lathe saddle is locked in place so it can't move. So all I now have to do is put each fitting into the three-jaw chuck in turn and take a nice smooth facing cut across the front. I did this on the gland covers first followed by the two identical steam flanges. You have to be a bit more careful when you machine these because there isn't as much depth to go into the chuck jaws as there is on the others. When I parted off the flanges though they were quite close to each other so I'm only having to take very fine cuts. It seems to me that most operations are common sense but it's still a good idea to sit down and look at the part, look at the drawing and have a think about it before you even go anywhere near the lathe. Now it's initial clean-up time. I'm using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper, but it's not very successful used dry. But as usual, once I added some oil to the wet or dry sandpaper, the job was much easier. After cleaning the fronts up using this method, I used the polishing spindle for going around the edges. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.